Good morning, everybody. It's a new day. I'm ready to conquer some new challenges, so we're going to be talking about state. This is a very important part of React, so make sure you pay attention. And we just talked about props. This video, we're going to talk about a little bit of the difference between the two, when to use which, and yeah, I think that's it. Oh, yeah. Subscribe. That's what it was. Totally forgot. So as mentioned in the previous episode, props are not meant to be changed. To illustrate this, let's go ahead and enter this function, and we will assign a value to props.name. Doesn't really matter what it is, so just go ahead and type something, and when we save, it'll say compiled successfully. Going to the browser, opening inspect, you can see there's nothing showing up here. Go to console, we get a bunch of errors here. Cannot assign to read-only property name of object. And this is referring to employee line two. What this means is that we're not supposed to change the value of the props in the child. Instead, we will change it in the parent. And the way we're going to change this value is with the use of state. State will allow us to keep track of values, but it's a little bit different than just a variable because the state can be tied to the user interface so that when the state changes, the user interface will automatically update. This will be important because we're going to be working towards building an employee list where you can edit people's information and it will update the user interface without a page refresh. So to do that, we're going to need state. So let's go ahead and go back to our code, fix it, and then I'll show you the better solution on changing values. So we'll go over, remove this assignment here, save, taking a look at a browser, this is what it's supposed to look like. And what I wanna do is I wanna be able to change these values. So we have Caleb, Abby, and John. Let's say we have an input. So we'll go up here into app.js. Above our employees, we can say input type being equal to text. And we will also have an on change property. And this will be invoked anytime we change the value. So that's what the structure is going to look like. And then inside of here, we're going to create an arrow function, which will allow us just to define it in line, which makes it a little easier. And we'll say console log. Now to get what actually is typed in into the input, we use e.target.value. So we'll save, it does a little bit of reformatting. So now we have this input and as we type, you can see it says e.target.value because I'm a literal moron and I put it in quotes. So word of advice, don't be a moron like me. So we'll save that. Now, where does this e come from? Well, it's passed in to the function. So we create a parameter on this function and that value will come from this input. So now it seems to be working where we get hello there in the terminal. We could define a variable up here. We'll just say let role be dev. And then Abby's role could be assigned the role variable. We save. So far, so good. Employee Abby, her role is dev. So let's just go ahead and assign that value to that variable so we can change it, right? And the actual fix for this, because this isn't going to work quite yet, but the fix is going to just be a small change which will introduce state. So we save, and as we type there, let's go ahead and say intern. You can see it shows up down here in the terminal, but the actual value being displayed is not updating, even though we set the role to the role variable and we are updating the role variable value. And that's exactly where state comes in and how it is different than a variable. We want to use a variable that is associated with the display on the web page. So to introduce state, we need to do an import. We say import use state inside of curly braces from React. Now, why is this one in curly braces and the employees not? Well, inside of our employee, we export a default employee the way that use state was exported is a little bit different, which requires curly braces. Not really an essential piece of information to understand right now. Just know that you have to put the curly braces here. It's slightly grayed out because we haven't used it yet. So let me show you how to use it. You're going to say const, and then in square brackets, you're going to put the name of the variable. So we will say role, comma. Then you're going to have a function which will allow us to set the role. And this is going to come from use state. So this is the structure, and then we can get rid of this line here. Anytime you use state, it's going to look pretty much like this. These are just variables, so you can change the names of them, but by convention, people will usually have the variable, and then 
the variable prefixed with set in camel case. Now the use state, this is going to take any default value. So where we used to assign dev, we now put it in here, right here. We don't need to change role down here because it's already associated to that variable. But you can see the set role is slightly dimmed because it's not being used. We need to use that function instead of assigning it a value. Number one rule of state is you never assign a value to the variable directly. You always go through set whatever the state is. In this case, set role. It's going to look like this. We will remove this line and replace it with set role and then pass in whatever value we want, such as e.target.value which again gets the value from the input. We save, and that should be our final code. So let's go ahead, try it out in the browser. So currently it has dev as default, and we could change this to something else, engineer, and you can see it updates automatically as we type. So very cool. That is the proper way to work with values that need to be changed on the user interface inside of React. Now as for the employee component, it doesn't do anything to change the value. All it does is display the value, and that's all it needs to do. The parent is the one that controls what is being passed to the employee component. It can be a little bit confusing at first, especially getting used to the proper syntax on using state and you know understanding which components do what, but as you go through more exercises, this will become a lot easier. Now this actually introduced a very important subject inside of React, and that is known as hooks. So use state is an example of a hook. There are other hooks that we can use to introduce functionality into our components very easily. So again, use state is one, and when things start with use, it's a good sign that it is a hook. We will learn about more hooks in upcoming episodes. But when people are talking about hooks, that is what they mean. This allows you to use other React features without writing a class. Right now we are using function components. Another alternative is to use classes, but I prefer to use the functions with hooks as do most people in modern React, I would say. So at this point, we have a pretty basic understanding of React, but our website has looked like absolute trash. So the next episode, we're going to learn about the basics of styling. With full disclosure that by no means am I a web designer, but we're going to try and build something like this. All right, calm down. Yes, I know it is beautiful, but we will do our best to recreate this. And this will eventually allow us to go in, edit, change a name. So for example, we could change this back down to intern and it'll update the value on the user interface. So it might take us a couple videos to get to this point. So in the next one, we're going to get everything set up so that we can start designing. Now it's not a design course, so we're not gonna go into a lot of depth, but we'll cover the bare minimum to get it to look at least decent. So stay tuned for the next one, I'm excited. See you then. <laughs>